everyone and welcome back to Make the Music. I think it's important we learn production and mixing techniques from more than just the hard rock and rock genre, right? We can learn a lot from indie rock, indie pop, as they got a lot of interesting techniques there that you can apply across many different genres. We're going to be taking a look at Walk the Moon's song Shut Up and Dance, which is a big hit close to a decade ago. So I'm going to get into the session here and break down how to create an indie rock pop track from scratch, okay? We're going to be building out the drums, bass, all the different instrumentation, as well as how to mix the track to get a very aggressive upfront track, but still have that is very accessible, has great sounding vocals and can sound great on any stereo and speaker system. So join me here as I jump into my session. But before that, real quick, you should hit the like button and subscribe to the channel that tells me to make more videos like this. And you should download my home studio toolbox. It's a free guide outlining all the free material that you can use to help you start making your own music. That's in the description box down below. You can also download the stems from this session in the description box down below if you want to go through them and see how I recreated these tracks. Anyways, let's get into the session here and let's see how I uh, created this track. All right, so let's get into this session here for Walk the Moon, Shut Up and Dance. Um, I usually like to start with the master chain here, so I'm gonna go there um, to begin with. I'm using Virtual Mix Rack. Um, I'm using uh, the E channel there, a little bit of drive, a little bit of EQ. This is pretty typical for what I do in terms of mastering. I added some low mid information there to beef up the mix I'm using the SSL compressor. Let me play it so you can see how much gain reduction that's doing. So close to 4 dB of gain reduction on that. Um, you can see here I'm using a limiter, doing a little bit of limiting. Then it goes into the FGX2, which is uh, a mastering plugin by Slate to bring the volume up. And then I finished it off with Ozone 10 for a little bit of EQ and dynamic, dy dynamics match, I should say. So let me play the mix here. I said you're holding lacking a lot of volume due to the limiters there but that's the effect that's having there that's really important to note now let's get into the drum sound here to create that sort of indie rock drum sound i'm using superior drummer three i end up using it looks like the modern kit with uh quite a few instruments here i'm using the dw here i'm using uh actually these got muted i'm using a sample that got muted actually so don't pay attention to that um, and then i'm using from the hard rock kit or the rock solid kit the iot custom the just the kick one there and that creates this sort of sound. Um, and then the snare, I'm using, let's see here, this is from the Rock Solid Kit as well, the Ludwig Black Magic Dampened. And then a couple different samples that I added there, just some slate, I think 80 samples that it was really fitting for this style of track. I think everything else in the kit is stock. Occasionally I swap out cymbals if I think something's too, uh, high-end heavy or something like that but mostly easy drummer two kit with some kick and snare sounds swapped out here so the drums sound like this and then there's some processing on them so let's start with the drum bus here virtual mix rack just a little virtual channel a little shimmer and thickness i'm using the cl76 um compressor here the black channel you can see that's using a very mild amount of compression. Not a lot going on there, just kind of kissing the drums to glue them together. Uh, the kick sound here took out a lot of low mid information. It was a little too much. The rock solid kick is supposed to be like a, you know, a Nickelback hard rock inspired kit. This is not a hard rock track, so didn't need that much low mids and add a, a bit of high information there. Um, and then for the snare drum, added quite a bit of stuff here to get it to fit. Virtual mix rack, I'm compressing it a bit. Shimmer using the Neve EQ setting here. Did some more EQ, added some of uh, the kilohertz reverb. Adding some sustain to the snare drum there, a little more EQ, and then I'm actually doing a bit of soft clipping as well to give that snare, uh, bring the transients up and kind of balance it out. So that's the snare drum there. Um, and then just a little bit of processing on the hat, taking out some lows, adding some mid range, and then overheads. Added this D Harsh plugin, which is a free plugin. Um, it just helps take some of the harshness out of the cymbals. Really like that plug in there. I found that during some of the chorus parts, the cymbals were just way too aggressive. And then a bit of EQ on the ambient channels here. Same EQ. So the full drum sound sounds like this. Real tight, fits the track nicely. There are some percussion elements in this track, actually quite a few that come in during the first verse. These are all Easy Drummer 3 patches, basically, a few samples thrown in there, just some stomps and claps. I'm just processing those with EQ, cutting out the lows and highs. 
that I just have like some extra crashes and stuff. You can hear there's like a shaker and tambourine as well. I'm automating some of the stuff like the stomp, which is a little more prevalent in the verse. I'm automating that down during the other parts. So like for the clap chorus, just some EQ, the stomp, uh, I add some stereo width to it to make it sound like it was a room of people like stomping. So like if I take that off here, let me solo the stomp. This adds a bit of stereo width. This is all real subtle processing, but if I take it all off, you can hear it sounds like this. some ambience and filtering there to get it to work with the drum sound. So if I had the percussion and drum sound, this creates a nice real uh, thick sound there. Now let's get to the bass guitar track. So that sounds like this. I have it automated down during the intro and it's split between three tracks here. An amp, a DI, and a low bass. like the low bass wasn't necessary during the intro part because it's just playing kind of up on the high strings and it, I, I just didn't need it. So first on the entire bass bus, I have the virtual mix rack going, some compression, virtual channel, a little bit of EQ. You can see that's kind of subtle and then the 76 EQ is actually going to reel this in a little more. I didn't want it overly compressed like a metal track, but I didn't want the bass out of control. This is also a pop track. We need to keep the dynamics uh, reined in, of course. Then I'm using Amplitude 5 for my guitar amp, or my bass amp here. I'm using, it looks like just a sort of a standard uh, bass amp here, driven by this overdrive pedal. You see that drive pedal does uh, quite a bit there. It's driving this amp peg into this cab. Uh, an ample tube. And then for the low bass setting, I use my usual low bass trick. You've seen me do this before. Took out all the highs, uh, added a bunch of low end, and then limited it. And so that low track sounds like this. And the key is blending that in with the other tracks here. And now the bass fits uh, real nicely in there. So that's the bass guitar track, and we have quite a few guitar tracks here. We have some clean guitars, which are playing during the verse parts and the chorus here. So there's some real distorted guitars on the edge, and then here's, these are the clean ones. I basically just use overloud Marshall patches, and then I EQ'd it by adding a lot of brightness and some shimmer. See those are real boxy sounding without the EQ, right? Um, basically, the patch I use that for the the slate patch, the overloud patch. I use the custom amp, which is a blick, uh, a plexi Brit, so basically a Marshall, a little bit of drive, and then some chorus and delay just to make the sound a little more interesting, and then adding some EQ there. So that's basically the clean guitar section. The EQ there just to sort of help it blend in with the rest of the mix. Then I have these chorus distorted guitars here. There's like a rhythm right and a rhythm left, and there's sort of a lead part on the far right channel playing a single note part here. The goal of these was to sound real thick in the mix and, and uh, uh, you know, thick it up in the low mids. So the virtual mix rack here, some shimmer, some thickness. I'm still adding some like 3K and some 7.5K there, um, taking out a little bit of low end. And then this EQ is adding some low mids and taking out some highs. So if I take that off, They sound much more exciting. They've got a little more mid-range. Basically the same amp patch, it looks like. Drive pedal into an overloud like JC, JCM 900. I'm not sure what the amps they used on the actual track, but it seemed to work uh, for me. So the guitars together sound like this. They seem to fit real well there. That seems to be working well. Then there's the intro guitar part, right? The, the famous intro. It sounds like this on my track. Now, many people think that's one guitar. It's actually not. There's actually a, a scratchy guitar part on the right, a very like U2, the streets have no name esque sounding thing, and then the actual leads on the left. And so, what I did here is 
I used an overload patch. It's got some delay. It's got some reverb on it. I didn't want to go too over the top with it. Um, looks like I actually used the um, the Boston 100, which is just basically a Rockman model with a little distortion going through it here on that lead part, which is uh, quite interesting to me. Now, of course, the Rockman has an echo and a chorus, and I used the edge channel, it looks like. So it gives it that, you know, that feel. This album has a very, this Walk the Moon song has a very 80s feel anyways, so I felt like it was pretty applicable to use a Rockman. Um, I believe similar settings on the scratch guitar. Oh, no, I'm using Overloud, and I really wanted to EQ it just to get that, like, pick scratch. It's actually a really tough part to track as well to play in time. I really have some respect for this guitar player now. And then I'm just using some EQ there to dial it in. So if I take the EQ off, Just keep, 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 keep. So that sounds like this uh, in the intro here. That plays through the entire Whoa. intro. I have some synths now. Let me mute the vocals real quick till I get to them. I have some synth parts here that came in during the verse. These were all just expand patches. Pretty simple. Expand's a pretty, uh, you know, widely used plugin. It's not the best synth ever, but it gets the job done. Just a couple different parts here. EQ took out all the low end and then virtual mix rack, I am adding some highs there to get to fit. So if I took the EQ out, you see that's adding a lot of brightness to the synths. They're taking up way too many low mids uh, before. Synths are pretty easy to mix since the sounds coming in are usually pretty solid. You just gotta take out the low and low mids to make sure they can fit with the rest of the track there. So that's the instrumental here, I'll play it. That's proven pretty good. I was liking that. Now let's get to the vocal section here. Let me actually solo the vocals. So vocals here, there's a lead. Um, there's some doubles and some harmonies. Was not, I didn't have to go too crazy with this one. So here's what the lead vocal sounds by itself here in the intro. Oh, don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said shut up. Dance with me. So what am I using this on this vocal? Well, on the main vocal, I just have reattune and metatune. Just get the vocal. Um, you know, reined in here. It is a pop track nonetheless, and I'm sure they used tuning on it as well. So I'm not embarrassed uh, to, to do the same. But on the vocal bus, there's quite a bit of processing going on here. Um, adding, getting rid of some lows. Um, I should also note that I tracked with a little bit of compression and EQ going in. I just like to make sure that when my track finally gets to the mixing stage, it's not just this crazy dynamic thing. So I use like a distressor plug in, and I take off 4 to 5 dB max. I'm not doing a ton of compression here, but you can see the waveforms are compressed a bit. Um, EQ, I'm taking out some of like that mid-range, adding some highs. I was just trying to match the original track here. Virtual mix rack, I use the Neumann mic model, although you don't have to have the Slate stuff to use the Neumann mic, mic model. I use my, my MX87, um, but my voice is really top-end heavy and can get nasally uh, at times, and the Neumann just really helps smooth it out. I'm using like uh, the 1073 preamp, the virtual channel, add some highs here on the EQ, took out some lows, and then I like, I like this revival. It just really adds a nice little touch of harmonics, and then I use the distressor here. Oh, don't you dare look back. Just keep your I really like the compressing stages. I think that's the key to getting a clean vocal sound that's also present. So it's like four to five dB going in, four to five on the distressor here. And then I'll show you some additional compression I did. This is the Fresh Air plugin. Oh, don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on Just me. Just add some brightness I said there, a de of course. Oh, don't you this dare is on the entire vocal back. bus. So if I play all the vocals here, um, it sounds like this. Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said shut up. I'm also using the limiter just to sort of limit that vocal, keep it in one place. Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I just want to make sure it doesn't get more than like 6 dB with all the vocals kicking in. Too much limiting, the vocal can sound really distorted and uh, chopped off. That's why I like to compress on the way in, add another stage of compression, and then the limiting. Then I have like a slap stereo delay going on. Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. So those I are the vocals with no ambience. Way more exciting with the ambience, right? Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. Like a I subtle said... stereo uh, delay there. Then the CLA Epic to add some more reverb and delay. Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I thought the whole vocal I was said just you're... a bit bright, so I used the tilt to tilt it downward. It's pretty straightforward. So without any plugins, the vocals sound like this. Yeah, look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and I don't feel like it sounds that me. bad. I got some 
these right and left vocals were just adding in during like the shut up and dance parts. She said, shut up and dance with me. That's some harmony parts here that I used Wave's harmony for. Shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny. They're just adding a major third on top of that. So all the vocals sound like this. Shut up and dance with me. This woman is my destiny. She said, ooh, ooh, shut up and dance with me. There you go. So that's my breakdown of Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon. Pretty interesting indie rock track. Um, with some catchy moments in there. Let me know, did you learn anything from this one? How well did I match the original song? I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Does any tracks I should match in a future episode? You should let me know in a comment down below. And get the free guide, the Home Studio Toolbox. It's 100% free. And you can get the stems of this track by going to the description as well. It's all 100% free. So now I'm going to do the full playthrough of the track, and you can listen and see how well I did. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Oh, don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me I said you're holding back, she said shut up